Today, we are going to talk about a famous Polish astronomer who changed how people saw the universe. Copernicus was born on February 19, 1473 in Toronto, Poland, to a wealthy family. His father was Nicholas Copernicus Sr. and his mother was Barbara Watsonrode, who were both successful copper merchants. His mother died around 1483 and his father passed away as well, when Nicholas was just 10 years old. After Nicholas's parents died, Bishop of Armenia, Lucas Watsonrode, took him under his protection and became his guardian. Copernicus' uncle impacted his education and future as a church canon. Nicholas Copernicus' Educational Background Nicholas Copernicus attended three different universities, the University of Krakow, the University of Bologna, the University of Padua. In year 1483 to 1491, Copernicus' uncle sent him to cathedral school in Wokluwik to study to be a clergyman. At the age of 18, Copernicus goes to University of Krakow, where he becomes interested in astronomy. Then in year 1496 to 1500, Copernicus studies canon law at the University of Bologna, where he lives in the home of school's astronomy professor, Professor Domenico Maria Novara. Copernicus also learned Greek at this time. In 1498, Copernicus read the original writings of some scientists who have not translated their work into Latin. One of the scientists that he read is Aristarchus, an ancient Greek astronomer who wrote that the earth spins, making it look like planets are revolving around the earth. In 1501 to 1503, through the influence of his uncle, Copernicus becomes a canon at Fronberg Palace. Then he takes a temporary leave to study medicine at the University of Padua. However, he did not stay long enough to earn a degree, since the two years leave of absence from his canon position was nearing expiration. Copernicus attended the University of Ferrara, where he took the necessary exam to earn his doctorate in canon law. Then, he hurried back home to Poland where he resumed his position as a canon and rejoined his uncle at an episcopal palace. In 1503, Copernicus remained at the Lidzbark Warminski residence for the next several years, working and tending to his elderly, ailing uncle and exploring astronomy. Copernicus' uncle, now Bishop Watson Road, has helped him with his administrative work at his palace. With his medical knowledge, Copernicus cares for his uncle and other canons when they are ill. He also translates a historical piece from Latin to Greek that is published in 1509. On the following year, Copernicus returns to Fornbridge and continues his duty as a canon. He also writes a paper to help with some money issues in the area. Copernicus lives in one of the towers of the cathedral in Frauenburg after his church duties are done. His room in one of the towers surrounding the town boasted an observatory, giving him ample time and opportunity to study the night sky, which he did in his spare time. On the revolutions, about 1510 to 1540, Copernicus spent 30 years of his major work on the revolutions. He is hesitant to publish it because of the Catholic Church's view of the Earth as the center of the universe. His theory challenged the geocentric theory of Claudius Ptolemy. Geocentric theory proposed by Claudius Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy born in Egypt in 100 AD when it was part of the Roman Empire. He was a mathematician, astronomer, and geographer. Ptolemy placed the Earth at the center of his geocentric model, using the data he had. Ptolemy thought that the universe was a set of nested spheres surrounding the Earth. He believed that the Moon was orbiting on a sphere closest to the Earth, followed by Mercury, then Venus, and then the Sun. Beyond the Sun were a further three spheres on which Mars, 
then Jupiter, and then Saturn orbited the Earth. Copernicus' heliocentric theory had been critical of Ptolemy's ancient system. The Copernican system gives the truer picture than the geocentric theory. Heliocentric theory argues that the Sun is the central body of the solar system which Earth, along with the other planets, rotated around the Sun. In the year 1543, the publication of Copernicus' book is a major milestone in the history of science, entitled On the Revolutions of the Celestial Spheres. It was a radical act that changed beliefs held for over a thousand years in which he formulated a model of the universe that placed the sun rather than the earth at the center of the universe. The Copernican model of the universe sparked an avalanche of ideas from other notable astronomers and scientists namely Tycho Brahe, Johannes Kepler, Galileo Galilei, and Isaac Newton. The Copernican revolution shows that the progress of science has been traced turns, and even setbacks. This change in thinking or paradigm shift did not happen overnight, and there was no single observation that overturned the great model of the universe. It also showed that it can be dangerous to pursue a new and unpopular idea. George Joachim Reticos, a Lutheran student from the University of Wittenberg, Germany. He went to Frauenberg to study with Copernicus to pretest Copernicus theories. Riticus publishes Neratio Prima or First Report. Neratio Prima is an abstract of Nicholas Copernicus heliocentric theory written by George Joachim Riticus in 1540. It is an instruction to Copernicus, major work De Revolutionibus Orbium Scholistium, published in 1543, largely due to Riticus' integration. This revolution of celestial sphere was published in the year of his death, 1543. He had formulated the theory by 1510. Copernicus is 68 years old in 1541. His health is poor. At Riticus' urgings, Copernicus sends his work to be published. Riticus oversees much of the work. Nicholas Copernicus died at age of 70 on May 24, 1543 of a stroke. He had not married and had no children. He had devoted his life to science, church, and government. On the 24th day of May year 1543, the 70-year-old Copernicus received the first printed copy of his work on the revolution of celestial sphere, but due to his poor health, Copernicus died hours later after receiving it. Later that year, many scientists start reading Copernicus' work, which was published in six volumes. His theories influenced Galileo Galilei, Isaac Newton, and many others. Copernicus will be remembered as the first astronomer to use mathematics and physics to prove that the Earth was not the center of the universe, but rather a planet that joined with others to orbit around the Sun.